Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Heather, I'm the Songbird Stamper and I'm here today to show you this cute project. I love making 3D items and uh, I saw a quick video in, a, I watch a lot of, um, kind of Pinterest videos. Um, so there's no instructions and it was just a quick video and I thought, oh, that looks interesting. So I've come up and designed some measurements which I'm going to share with you today to accompany a blog post because sometimes you just can't put things in writing. But it's really, it's a really sturdy box because of the quantity and the sides. It really, really gives it some um, body um, and keeps it all together. It's magnetic closure and inside you can fit quite a lot of treats. I've got a packet of mini buttons, some tea, a freddo, some seeds and some more tea. So a fantastic little gift. This one would make um, either a get well gift or a thinking of you um, a little hostess gift even so yep so you can get loads in here and i'm going to show you how to make it this one was made in melon mambo cardstock and i'm going to make one in gorgeous grape cardstock as well and the papers that i'm using are the hues of happiness It's a little label getting stuck. There we go. And it just closes up by popping in behind there. And I just popped a piece of ribbon on as well. I'd make it look a little bit like a handbag. I'm going to use God gorgeous grape cardstock today. And like I said, the Hues of Happiness designer series paper. And these gorgeous flowers. And on the reverse, these designs here. Um, beautiful colours. And I've got a, three pieces of cardstock. These two pieces measure nine centimeters by 18 centimeters. The two, it doesn't have to be white, just whatever size you want your concertina to be. Uh, nine centimeters by 18 centimeters. And this piece here is 27, 29.7, which is the length of an A4 sheet. So for UK uh, measurements, and it's by 9.2 centimeters. Okay. Then all we're going to do is take these two pieces of thick white and score them at one and a half centimetre intervals. So you can use your trimmer or you can use your scoreboard. Sometimes the scoreboard can give you a more accurate um, trim, but I quite like using my scoreboard, my trimmer. So one and a half, three, four and a half, six, Seven and a half, nine, ten and a half, twelve. All the measurements will be over on my blog, um, so link in the description below if you want to have a look at how to make this in the written form. Thirteen and a half, fifteen, sixteen and a half. That's one, same on the other one. One and a half, three, four and a half, and six, seven and a half, and nine, ten and a half, and twelve, thirteen and a half. 15 and 16 and a half. Okay. And then this long piece, I'm going to score it at 9 centimetres on the long side. 9 centimetres, 13 centimetres, 22 centimetres, and 26. It's a lovely box to make. There's no cutting involved or anything at all, so it's quite quite an easy one to make. Apart from sticking all the, the panels in, it's just hard to explain. So I'm just going to fold this concertina style. So one one way, one the other way. We've probably all done this at primary school when we were making something. So 
and then ideally use a bone folder just to give those a bit of a, a good crease. But you don't have to. And the same with this one, just concertina fold it. And then if you're taking your time, I'm just doing it quickly so that I can um, get this made for you, really. So let's pop our coloured piece out to one side. And we're going to start on one side. So just take one of your pieces of thick cardstock. And you want nine squares of card. Sorry, six squares of card measuring nine centimetres by nine centimetres. Okay, so six squares measuring nine by nine. And then the first one, to ease that back out again, is going to be stuck on this first kind of concertina fold. Now when you fold something, you get a bit of a ridge line, don't you? Don't stick it over the ridge line. Just butt the edge of the card up to the, where the ridge starts, and that will be perfect. Otherwise, what you'll find is it will just struggle to close. So just butt the card up to that ridge line, and the same on here as well. So you, then you miss one, and then you do another one, butt it up to that. Ridge line, that bump, and keep on going all the way up. Try not to get excessive glue um, everywhere, but you know, sometimes it can't be helped. And then with this last one, you're going to want to glue as normal on this side, but then glue this one down as well. Oh, bit of patience. Then we kind of re concertina, and that's one side of your box. So now we just need to stick this one on. So this is a little bit more fiddly. Take your time, and same as before. So you've got your concertina, put your end one here, just pop some glue on that end one, and then take this, butt it up to that ridge line and then press it down. Close the concertina up, pop some glue. So this one is more fiddly, so just take your time, make sure you get it right. That was a bit of gentle, gentle persuasion go in all the way up to that ridge line and then you can close that one over the top of it okay. and just keep working your way up and they can see why I made a video because there was no way I was going to be able to do this in the written word Make sure it's all the way in before you close this one down on top of it.
I think it gets a bit easier towards the end. And then the last one. So you're going to want glue on both sides. You can either do it together or you can just do it one at a time. And then if you've got it all good, the whole thing should close just like that. It's like one of those accordion files. So there's the kind of crux to our box. Now this is our wrap. Fold and burnish. All of these score lines. Now you've got big square, big square. Those are the only two that we're going to glue. This is going to be the bottom, this is the top, and this is the flap that comes over. So you're going to want like this. So this is the front. So we're going to pop some glue on here. Try and get all the way to the sides just because it holds it nicely then. And then we're going to lay it down and make sure we've got everything lined up. And then if you want to either use your fingers or use your bone holder just to get in there and make sure that's all pressed down. Glued nicely. Okay, and then we'll pop some glue on this bit. I so said, don't glue the bottom or the top, just these two big squares. Make sure you've got it all lined up with the sides and with this top bit here. And then use your bone folder again, just to get in there and press that all down. Okay, and there's our box. I'm going to show you how to do a magnetic closure. I love doing these, I love the feel of them. Got some magnets and some glue dots. So my magnets come in a cool little tin. They're very, very strong. Um, these were from Amazon and they're one millimetre thick. And I can't remember what the dimensions of the um, di diameter. It's about five millimetres, I think. About half a centimetre, but I've had lots of different ones. And the way to do it is to separate it so that you've got two. Two magnets and two magnets. Leave them on opposite side because as you can see, they're very, very strong. But they're repelling each other so strong so separate them put them on either side grab your glue dots find where the glue dots start put, put a glue dot on the back of one of the pairs of two and then on the lid pop it a fair way in from the side and the side here, probably about a centimetre in from each side, and that's because you want it, don't want it too close to the edge because we're going to cover it with cardstock. Well, if you cover it with cardstock and the magnet's quite thick, you won't be able to glue the cardstock down on the other side. So, about there, and the same with the other one as well. And the glue dots hold these beautifully. So, stick it about a centimetre in on either side and then go ahead and pop another glue dot on each of the top magnets okay now what you can do is just close this up 
make sure you've got it lined up so that it's a nice flat close. Make sure the edges line up. Yep, I'm happy there. And then rather than lifting that magnets away, just slide. And that will mean that these bottom two stay in place enough so that you can just press them closed like that. Now you've got a nice magnetic closure. And all we're going to do is decorate it now. So I've got two squares, uh, three squares of card. Measurements for these are all over on the blog. And some designer series paper. So they're not quite square. There's about two millimetre difference because we needed to make this casing nine centimetres high. We needed to make it 9.2 wide just so that the edges of the cardstock didn't come out and over. So I'm just going to stick these layers to the mats. Or the mats to the layers, whichever way around. You could pop this nice um, patterned one on if you wanted to. I'm going to stick with this. stick with this kind of whitewash painting painted background in a fresh freesia colour. It's gorgeous. So these two are slightly different. The top is slightly different to the flap. I'll pop the um, measurements for this in the description below. I would shout them out now, but actually I've not got them in front of me. Um, I've started the video and the measurements are on my computer, which isn't flashed up, so apologies. But I will pop the measurements for these ones in the description below, so you haven't got to go hunting too far for them. And while you're down there, give us a like and uh, a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. And you can see loads more of them. I'm constantly uploading new videos onto the channel. And it would be fab to have you watching them. So now these can be stuck straight on. So I've got one for the flap. One for the lid. And then this one is going to go over here and over the magnets. So can you see why you didn't want to stick the magnets too close to the sides? Because if you did, you wouldn't get the sides of this stuck down. It's not the end of the world. I've done it a few times, but it just doesn't look quite as neat. That's all. And then... You'll take your time with it. I'm going to be I'm going to be quite quick, but you're just going to want to take your time with that glue and just hold it until it's pressed in place and dried. So yeah, I'm just going to. You don't want to sit here and watch me waiting for glue to dry. And there's our box. So I've decorated it. I'm going to decorate it with the hues of happiness, um, or is it the happiness abounds? It's called Happiness Abounds Stamp Set. Love this one. It's available now in the 2022 to 2023 annual catalogue. Some beautiful, beautiful sentiments. Some lovely images which you can sit and colour in. Um, and I've actually used watercolour pencils and my Wink of Stella to colour these in. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that. Um, fresh freezer, there is no watercolour pencil, so when I come to do my fresh freezer, I am going to use the ink pad. But I'll probably speed this section of the video up so that you haven't got to sit here and watch me colouring. And I've stamped with stays on ink. When you're using any kind of watercolouring, and the Wink of Stella brush is the same, 
you want to stamp with a, an ink that is waterproof and this stays on is the right ink Stays on is the right ink for that. So yeah, this one, I'm just going to use my Fresh Freezer ink pad. This wink of Stella just gives it a really nice glittery, shimmery effect. And I'm using the shimmery white cardstock as well, I forgot to tell you that. It takes um, water better than the basic white. Again, you can take your time with this. I'm just trying to be quite quick. an idea of what this looks like and then for the leaves I've used granny apple green and garden green as well so just putting a little bit of garden green right at the base of the leaves I think it just gives it a bit of depth and when you're colouring with the pencils either leave a bit of white at the end or start off pressing quite hard at the bottom at the base of where you want it darker and then just work your way out to nice and light touches and that means less pigment is being laid down onto the paper and that means when you colour it you should end up with a lighter tip at the end you could use the blending brush with these as well the um, blender pen sorry Stamping up blender pen if you wanted to with your watercolour pencils, that works really, really nicely. But I just wanted a bit of shimmer and glitz. So I'm going to fussy cut these out. Um, again, I'll fast forward it and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so that's all of our elements done. We will probably need a sentiment, but you don't have to put one on straight away. So I'm going to show you how to kind of decorate this. Bearing in mind that magnetic closure. So I've got, oh, we just need a little bit of yellow on that one, don't we? Where's my yellow? This is the Daffodil Delight. It's quite a strong colour, so you don't need much unless you want it to be really dark. A nice yellow centre on that one. So we're going to pop that half on, half off the closure. But of course, you don't want to stick it to the top, so you're just going to put some dimensionals on the bottom half. And then stick that down and that means that whatever you now do on the top this is still going to come out so we're going to be able to pull it out and then the leaves that we're going to pop on we're going to stick to the top of the box only so it looks like they're coming out from behind here but they're actually 
stuck to the top of the box. And I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. Same with this rose, just a couple of dimensionals. Might want three again. You can put on as many or as little as you want. If I'm rushing, I put less on. If I want to send something and be really sturdy, then I'll put more on. Because they do hold it in place. There's a little bit of glue on this side that's going to overlap here. I'm just going to pull that down ever so slightly. And then this one is going to come out like this. So a couple of dimensionals, a little bit of glue. And then pop that one under there. And then it's just a case of popping the extra leaves on. We'll have one coming out like so. Yeah, so if you need to cut the base off your leaves to kind of tuck them under, you can do so. Just trim it away it's because we've got the dimensionals on underneath there. It depends how much you want it to stick out of the side. A little bit, I don't mind, but not too much. So we have one coming out here. Again, just need to cut the base of that one off. Perfect. So, a few gems I think we'll have. I have got the most gorgeous, gorgeous gems that come with the Hues of Happiness Suite. It's the Glossy Dots Assortments. These are beautiful. So we've got Paul Party, Daffodil Delight, Melon Mumbo and Gorgeous Grape. So because we've used the Gorgeous Grape cardstock, I'm going to go for the Gorgeous Grape elements as well. Love these big ones. I don't normally use the big ones actually, but these are so pretty. So, so gorgeous. Um, and then for a sentiment, you can add one if you like. You don't have to add one. I have on this one added the Just For You. But I am going to leave this one because I might want to give this as a little birthday gift or something. So I can always add a sentiment. This die cut, though, is from the P Pretty Pillow Box dies. And I've just popped it up on Dimensionals. And the sentiment is from Celebrating You, beautiful um, stamp set. If you don't have it already, I suggest you do get it. It is gorgeous and loads and loads of different sentiments in here. So you're sure to find something you need. So I'll quickly show you how to pop on the ribbon that I'm going to use underneath just to have a little carry handle. And then that's our project made. And the box lid just opens like that and you can fill it full of goodies and treats. Right, so a little bit of um, crinkled seam binding ribbon. You can use whichever ribbon you want. All we're going to do is pop a piece of red tape just underneath. Uh, 
along the centre. Just trim that down. Start off with your seam binding in the middle. Take it round, keep it straight. Decide how long you want your handle to be. Probably want it about there. Chop some off. And then stick that over the other side. And there you have your box. Two gorgeous boxes full of loads of treats and you are away to go. Thank you so much for watching me. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made sense. Um, any questions at all, please do get in touch. Like I say the uh, measurements for the paper uh, will be um, and for the cardstock will be in the description below or over on my blog post. You'll be able to see a few more pictures and um, written detailed instructions of how I made this one. Thank you so much, take care and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.